everybody. Welcome to Generation H. H. <laughs> oh, did you get it? I did, I did. <laughs> All right, so today we're going to go really in deep on Furnish Finder, how to screen tents, everything you need to know. We're going to try and get as specific as possible. We got Daryl and Carlos going to ask me questions. I have one Furnish Finder about to go on my second one, putting it on Furnish Finder. So nice. I'm going to try and cover every single little thing there is to know for anyone trying to get started. Okay, so first off, Furnish Finder is a midterm rental, meaning yeah. one month to three months, maybe even if that gets extended another three months. That's what people put on Furnish Finder for. They only advertise for that. Nice. Marketing, the price to put it on Furnish Finder is a hundred bucks. Um, that and that lasts a month, a year? One time? Yeah, one, one payment of a hundred bucks and it lasts for a year. Per, okay. per, per year. property. Property. Okay. Per property. So. You have to pay that, and then every year you have to renew that if you plan on keep using Furnish Finder. Nice. Um, so after you put it on Furnish Finder, first off, you got to figure out how to find the price. So when looking for the price, what I do, and there might be other ways to do it, but first off, they have a stat sheet on Furnish Finder where you can go to furnishfinder.com slash stats, and yeah. you can put, on, put in your zip code or your area, and it'll tell you how many people are actually looking for a property and what price ranges they're looking for. So if a nurse is getting paid a certain stipend, they're gonna put that price, or they'll probably put lower than that price because they wanna make some money off of their stipend too. But they'll put in their price that they, they're looking for the property and then you can kind of gauge it off that. But what I like to do, which is I think is a little bit better, is look at others in the area and see what they're renting for. So if you see a few that are the same bedrooms renting for 2,000, maybe underprice them for a little, by a little bit, or if you think you have better amenities than them, overprice them a little bit, or just stay at the 2,000 that they're uh, running at. You gotta pay attention to the bedrooms and baths that they have compared to yours. This one you can do by the room, by the way. Um, I've never done it by the room, so I can't talk too much about that, but they do have sections where you can do it by the room, and there is people, there is traveling nurses and other people that are looking to rent by the room. Um, if you have a multiple room properties, it's a little more management. Intensive. I was gonna say, does it matter? Like, do you have to make the kitchen a common area and the living yeah, room and, and stuff so like that? Yeah, and so it's a little more management intensive because okay. they gotta deal with each other and you gotcha, might have to okay. answer more phone calls. Like this tenant's doing that. Um, that's why I choose to do my smaller places the whole house. and do the whole house. Okay. Um, so that's for that's for finding the price. Um, once you list the price, let's say you're listing it for two thousand bucks. Then you'll start getting notifications on Furnish Finder of people wanting to rent it. So you'll get some notif yeah, go ahead. So, so you put it you put it on you create an account, pay a hundred bucks, then you go on, you put pictures up. Yeah. And you yeah. description, all that. Yeah. Who you're looking can you get specific to like looking for females, looking for males, looking uh, pet pets available, no pets. Like you can get that specific in it. Uh, well, that's a fair housing law, so I don't think you can go. <laughs> you can do males. Good call. <laughs> I don't think you could, unless you're living in the property, I don't think you so, can just yeah. look for males. I but guess. Yeah, I, you, yeah, go ahead. I, I guess I was just curious about like the by the room. If it's a room, a uh, house full of a girls, full of girls. That's a good question. Then, I don't know the answer to that. Yeah. Actually. Okay. I don't know if you can discriminate if it's a house full. Of I would not. assume you can't discriminate. I would but think they, so too. I understand. I mean, that's a fair call. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you got a house full of girls. They're not going to want this random guy. Yeah. In, yeah. But, yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, you put pictures on, put the description, put everything on, list the property, take great pictures, same as you would with an Airbnb. Nice. Uh, furnish the place. I guess I forgot to add that in the beginning. Furnish the place. I also like to add toilet paper, paper towels, and you know, cure eggs and all that. For their whole stay, or just I the just beginning? give like a big thing of paper towels, okay. a big thing of toilet paper. You run out, um, it's on you. Yeah, and okay. usually that's enough to last them three months. It should. Be. I just do because I kind of go between Airbnb and Furnish Finder, so it's kind of easy. Airbnb, for me. that's what we're used to. Yeah. yeah, and I also do the supply the sheets too. I don't. I'm not positive if other Furnish Finder hosts do that, but I just do that maybe. Okay. Because it's already there anyway. Um, so as far as responding, you'll start getting notifications of people wanting to rent your place. You'll get notifications of match leads as well. So even if they don't message you, you'll get a notification that someone is looking for a property near you. You can reach out to them if you want. It gives you their phone number. Um, so you could text them. That's what my girlfriend does. She texts them saying all of them that come up just to see. She doesn't get response too much from those leads. But And they'll also show you unmatched leads, which is people that are looking in your area that don't fit your criteria for some reason, whether that be a pet, whether that be they're looking for a lower price. And yeah. you could kind of change your um, description 
based on that, change your price based on that. You can also message those unmatched leads just in case. Yeah. Um, and, and do they encourage, does Furnish Finder encourage communicating exclusively on their platform? It doesn't sound like it because they give you their phone number. Yeah, right? so they don't really care. They're not making money off any... It's just, the, it's $100 just the $100 yeah. and that's how they're making their yeah, money. Yeah, so they don't care what happened outside okay. of it. I, so okay. I guess I, so I guess that leads to the rest of it. They, I guess they yeah. they're not that involved. They don't make that much. Yeah. So, so they're not in that involved with the screening. Or yeah. Anything. So it's first finder strictly you. marketing, strictly a platform just for marketing. They don't really do any of this, but they do give you for like for screening. Let's say they give you options of who they recommend for okay. screening, and we do actually use them. It's called KeyCheck.com. There's plenty of others ones. That's just the one we use that that Furnish Finder recommends that I'm sure other traveling nurses have used before with other Furnish Finder hosts if they've used them before, if they've used yeah. Furnish Finder before. So that's why we use KeyCheck. And what KeyCheck does is they you send them a link and they pay, thir- I think it's 30 bucks. And once they pay that 30 bucks, they fill in their social security number, name and everything. Yeah. And then it sends you their credit report, their background report and their eviction history. Do you know if that credit report is a hard or soft pull? Or? I think it's a hard pull. It's a hard pull. Oh, really? Are they normally hard pulls? Usually like for, it's like a soft it, pull. Yeah, usually it's a soft pull. Yeah. Unless like if you get a car, it's a soft pull and not a hard pull. For your soft for Buildium, is it, is, it's probably the same as Buildium, I would assume. So it was a soft pull, though. Because Buildium is okay. a soft pull. Yeah. Okay, then it's yeah. probably soft pull. I, I, I don't know the answer to that, actually. And, and is, that's not required. That's... That's suggested but that's, that's not required. yeah that's not required so you couldn't you can't just go off your gut feeling off a phone call or text conversation with the tenant and be or, like okay this guy seems i have all cash yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. which you probably so do don't do your do. due diligence yeah. Yeah. yeah um you also so once you do the screening what what i look for personally is if they have a 680 plus credit score with um no criminal history and even if they have criminal history i just look at it and see what it is and if it's that i mean depending on what it is you can make your decision from there I mean, if yeah. it's some stupid traffic violations, whatever, you don't need to worry about that. As far as credit score, I usually look for like a 680 plus, and that's like almost automatic, as long as their income is good enough, which you got to click pay stubs from them. But if they have a 680 plus as a traveling nurse, chances are they're going to make their payments. You won't have to worry about evictions. You won't have to worry about your place getting trashed or anything like that. If they're between 600 and 680, 620, 680, you kind of got to do your due diligence on their credit report and kind of okay. see why. At least this is what I do. I see why their credit is that bad. If they've had late payments in the last two months, if they've had late payments in the last four months, if they have a car repossessed, you gotta look for that. Look for their collections. See if there's a lot of collections on their report. See if they they have a high student or high uh, loan balance on some things. Um, it's just, yeah. and then you kind of gotta just make your decision from there. You could look on Google and see like what's good and what's bad if you don't know the terms. Cause I know credit reports can be a little confusing if you're first looking at them to yeah. see all the information on a screen, see all the check marks, like what does that mean? But um, it tells you how recent good, how good their recent payments have been. Um, so that's what we do for, and then screen I don't want any evictions by the way. So we never do yeah. anything with evictions. Um, and bankruptcies, we don't usually if anyone has a bankruptcy, which I doubt traveling nurses yeah. have a bankruptcy, but um, never know. Yeah, you, know, you never know. Yeah. We usually don't accept those either. But obviously, it's to your discretion. This yeah. isn't um, this isn't advice on how to do it. This is just my my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> um, any questions on the screening? So now you found your good tenant. You did your screening. They look good on paper. What do you, what do you do next? So now after you, they look good on paper. I what I, what we do is we reach out to them and we say. Okay, your your application looks good. Um, if you want to rent the place, if you want us to take it off the market, you know, just send us two hundred bucks. We'll take it off the market, and then you'll pay the remaining deposit, which is we usually require around five hundred bucks of deposit. We don't require a full month. So it's not a full. Oh, okay. It's yeah. Not a full month. Yeah, because I saw a lot of others on uh, Furnish Finder not requiring that. So gotcha. to be competitive with them, I kind of wanted to be around or a little bit less than what they were doing. Okay. So. I choose five hundred dollars. So they send if they send the deposit, the two hundred dollars. I don't require the five hundred right then and there because so seven hundred total deposit. No, no, five hundred total. So okay, two so of the five. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Um, and it's a refundable deposit. So once they move out, you give that back. Okay, cool. But so they give you two hundred bucks. I take it off the market, whatever. Yeah. 
I give them whatever five days to pay the rest of their deposit or just before moving, they have to pay the rest of the deposit and their first month's rent before they even move in. Okay. Um, I have a question about uh, how soon are you posting? So like if someone applies to stay at your place, but it's three weeks out, a month out, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously that's not favorable for you. Oh, yeah. But there are a lot of people that are doing like short term, like I need something next week, now. three days yeah. from now, like. Are there a lot of people doing that? So usually with Furnish Finder, when I'm posting mine, I'm like, I'm booked for like another four, three weeks anyway. So okay. the people can see the date that the it's check -in thing is opening. Is yeah. So right now you're basically looking for people in January. Yeah. So it, on the, my listing, it'll say not available till January, till a month later. Okay. And then you'll get people messaging you based on that and you'll see when they move in. So they might say like, we, I need a January 17th. But your your opening day is January second, so in that case, you could choose to look for a tenant with a closer move-in date to January second, or in that January second to January seventeenth spread, you could put it on Airbnb. Does that okay, make sense? okay. So you can flip-flop back and forth and just just to fill in your little short yeah. term until they check. But that's only after the furnish finder's already been booked. Booked, yeah. Right, because otherwise, yeah. if your Airbnb is open, then it's. Gonna I mean, they can right. they can. Yeah. So when I so. I don't like to open my air if I'm trying to get a tenant and it's yeah. not and let's say it's not even booked on Furnish Finder at the moment and I'm trying to get a Furnish Finder tenant I don't open my air Airbnb. I put it on for like two weeks three weeks out Airbnb yeah, right. so people can still book short like short really term short days. term yeah like coming in this weekend yeah book it, and that's it and that way you're not losing all your income you're just losing a little bit of it while you look for a, a longer a term long, a okay. midterm tenant um, so that's with that yep. so that was that the deposit side, right yeah. okay. So yeah, two hundred dollar deposit. They give that to you. Yeah. Then I collect the rest, and then um, I have them sign the lease before they move in. Make sure you do that before they move in. Okay. So it's um, like a standard lease, like you do with long term lease. Yeah. So just... for me, I I read. I actually, well, if you guys don't have a lease, by the way, you could go online on Google and look for a lease yeah. in your area. And this is not uh, legal advice, but just look for a lease in if you're in Virginia, say type in Virginia lease. And make sure it's 2022 because yeah, a lot of things have changed. Oh yeah. yeah, since COVID. Since COVID. Oh, sorry, yeah, that a lot of word. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> or if you had an attorney, I mean, uh, you could use that too. You could yeah. have an attorney look it over, send you a lease that they think is better if you want to spend some money. Um, but they do have free leases online or free trials so you can get the lease. And I actually did that. I got I did a free trial. Where I just canceled it after a day and, and <laughs> got the PDF. So you can't just do that. I read through yeah. the whole thing though. Um, it's very similar to a long term. I don't think I. I don't okay. think much is different at all. Okay. Really, um, I guess just the length of the term. I do three month lengths, and then I say a thirty day to. You have to give me thirty day notice if you want to extend, yeah. Yeah. or in a thirty day notice if you want to <clears throat> cancel too. Yeah. Now okay. sometimes, if not, you'll automatically renew them for thirty. No, days, I or? mean we should have I, we should have communication. You've reached out. Yeah, already. it's not it, it's not okay. like you're like super communicative with them, but yeah. you should have reached out, or they should have reached out to you saying they want to extend or not. Gotcha. Um, okay. That makes sense. Yeah. So reach out, see if they want to stay. If they don't, and also yeah. sometimes our contracts get sh cut short. These traveling nurses. Yeah. Or they don't. They think they're gonna get there. And then they actually don't even, they cut them before they even go to the oh, place. Oh, okay. And that happens sometimes. So at that point, you would just keep the deposit. And, oh, yeah, or you if you're, no, no, I would probably refund it. Oh, but okay. you, you can keep it if you want. But I'd probably refund it. Yeah. Um, okay. And then now, can, find a new tenant. So that brings up a, good, a question about uh, reviews. Right. Yeah. So say you don't refund and you're like, I'm keeping the is security deposit. Yeah. Is, is there, I mean, it, it sounds like they're very hands off furniture finder. So, so they don't, is there a review process? They do have reviews uh, to the extent where I think they affect your listen, listing. Uh, definitely not as much as Airbnb. Do they go on your listing? I think they're, they are public. So okay, I think okay. you can't yeah. see them. So, so I click on your listing. I can see your Yeah, reviews. If you get a one star, I mean, that would probably deter other people. But okay, gotcha. I don't think they affect you as much as Airbnb, but they are public, so you okay. can't see how much um, they are. Hey, he review. kept my deposit because I canceled a week before or something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Um, mm -hmm. In the lease, I do do a cleaning fee of, you can charge whatever you want. I charge a hundred bucks. Same thing as like an Airbnb cleaning fee, whatever. Um, dogs and cats, you can add those to your listing as well. I charge an extra 50. 
Um, and that's I, cleaning fee just once at the very end? Just or is once. that like a monthly? Uh, do you take I that out of that deposit? So I collect that up front <laughs> on top of the, the oh, rent. Okay. Gotcha. So the first oh. month's 100 bucks more. Now, why wouldn't you just take it out of the deposit? I could, but I mean, then I have less. Then you have less, less deposit. Leverage. Yeah, yeah. You have okay, less deposit, gotcha. less leverage. They really screw up the place, and you have to put more than five hundred gotcha, bucks gotcha, in. Gotcha. That makes sense. Um, that's that's kind of why you you could all obviously choose to take it out of the deposit. Okay. Um, if you want. And as far as the lease signing and send it to DocuSign, it makes it pretty easy. Yeah. Um, there's ways to do it on other Hello Sign too. If you want to do it that way, just send it to them. They sign it, send it right back. Um, from there, you got to start collecting payments. Yeah, because it's not automatic like Airbnb or your rentals where it's through a yeah. site. Yeah, they're not, it's no. they're not collecting it and then distributing it to you. You yeah. have to collect it. Yeah, so <clears throat> we use Venmo or Cash App. It's the easiest, I think. I think a lot of okay. traveling nurses use that as well. Obviously, there's some um, like rental sites. I guess like apartments.com you can start up something with that if you gotcha. want if you don't have venmo you can also use zelle there's just so many different okay. options you can even get the, have them get a money order if you want to go collect i wouldn't recommend that but yeah. you're spending a lot it's of time venmo going. now they are going to try and hit you for taxes now on that money that's, that's true income because they passed that new thing so that might not be so you can get cash, so you get cash would be the best option <laughs> Could get cash. <laughs> Could get cash. Yeah. Barter. But I'm, like Zell I need a new alternator. Like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Or I um, need a new work done their nurses. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you gotta so, stitch me up? <laughs> yeah. Are you a diddle? I mean, <laughs> um. All right. So this sounds very much like a regular rental. It's, it's it, very similar, super similar. Yeah. Okay. So if you've never operated a rental before, yeah. jumping into an Airbnb is different Correct. and it's more of a yeah. host type subject. Way different than this. Yeah. And very different than that. So it requires very different skill sets. Mm -hmm. yeah. So would you say it's easier to jump into an Airbnb or is it easier to jump into a furnished rider? Because here, the Airbnb is like a day-to-day. -day, you have to be on top of it, mm -hmm. right? You can mess yeah. up and then you start over the next day, next guest. But exactly. here, if you mess up, you're... You could potentially have an eviction on your hands. Yeah, or, that's true because they're staying more true. than 30 yeah. days. Yeah. So this has a little more upfront work with the credit screening and all that. It's not that much more, though. Yeah. Um, obviously, Airbnb, they just book it and boom, they're in. Yeah. Um, you can look at their reviews and everything. A lot of the applicants on this site don't have reviews, so you can't really go off that. Okay. That's why you have to screen them with their uh, yeah, they credit and background. Yeah, yeah, credit and background. Um, as far as. I guess toughness of it. I think this is a little. This is easier than Airbnb to start. That's um, what mine was. Kind of a question. hybrid, I guess, yeah. between the long term and the Airbnb, because your reviews do matter a little bit, but not as much as Airbnb long term. So you can mess up. Yeah, you can mess up, and it's okay. Yeah, yeah exactly. Now, now, for someone who doesn't have any experience with rentals at all, yeah, this might feel a little bit more daunting because all of the responsibility is on, on you. you. Correct. Correct. So you you can mess yeah. up. The marketing, you could mess up the screening the and responding, and... the deposit, you can mess up yeah. and get a bad lease and then not Correct. be able to. So, like, you can mess up a lot more things. Uh, so, how would you? I don't know. Prevent I, that from happening? Yeah, or like, well, do you know of any kind of. Because there are uh, co hosts for Airbnbs who like manage it yeah. for. Do you know property management companies or um, if there's like a market for that? There probably is. I don't know. They I should, though. Assume, yeah. I think they would start. But also, the, the tenants you're getting to apply for this are probably yeah. a lot going to be more qualified, better qualified, qualified than are. someone doing a long term. Or, I mean, on you, you got to do less due like diligence, that. I think, on the person on this than if they're staying in your house for a whole year. Correct. Um, mainly just because a lot of them are traveling because they're traveling Good nurses job. or construction. Yeah, they're yeah. actually, they have income. Um, yeah. to show that yeah now what would make you yeah what would make you choose furnish finder over airbnb like um, if you were going into it like carlos said newbie what would make you choose this over that if you want a little bit hand more hand a little bit more hands off don't have to manage the cleaners don't have to okay refill paper towels or any of that refill supplies yeah. uh, i think this would be a better way for i guess if you're trying to be a little more hands off um yeah besides the front end part uh you know, it's mostly hands off. And before we end this video, I wanted to say one thing. So once they do book on Furnish Finder, let's say they book for three months out, I mean for a three month stay from January 1st to 
March 31st. Yeah. In February, March. Yep. <laughs> then on automatically on Furnish Finder, it'll, it'll close off the calendar. It'll be open nice. on April 1st. And then as it gets closer to the April 1st date, you'll start getting more yeah, cool. requests. Oh, cool. So it kind of does it that yeah. way, which is kind of cool. It's a way to kind of try and keep it yeah. moving, keep it occupied. So this is kind of like the middle ground between a long term and an Airbnb yeah. short term. This is kind of like that middle to where you got to do a little bit of due diligence, like a long term, but then not as much work as a Airbnb. Correct. Because Airbnb, you're a host like a yeah. hotel specialist and you have people coming in You're nightly or weekly or you have to be very hospitable and yeah Airbnb. very so so that's cool all well, right well if you have any questions drop them in the youtube channel yeah don't forget to subscribe and if you start one of these or have one of these or have anything you want to add on the discussion you know put feel free to yeah put in the comments yeah we will read them Hopefully. Yes, and hopefully we'll, <laughs> we'll circle back to this in a couple of weeks and make another video if you have good questions. Yeah, and by the way, on the way the market's going on this, uh, I have seen a little bit of less applicants, and that might just be because it's December between Thanksgiving so I was thinking, and Christmas. Yeah, holidays, um, less likely to travel for yeah. work. Yeah, so I'll let you know if it picks up again once it gets a little warm around people are looking for jobs. But. Nice. All right, and this is Generation A.